You've heard of the magic loop method for knitting two socks at the same time to avoid that dreaded second sock syndrome, but the process seems like it must be really confusing. Actually, it is really simple, and we're gonna walk through all of the steps you need to know to knit a pair of socks at the same time, from the cuff to the short row heel, all the way down to the toe, and even using some fun contrasting colors. But all you need is the pattern, which you'll find linked down below, your favorite sock yarn, and a long circular needle. So let's get ready to knit a pair of socks and we can avoid that dreaded second sock syndrome. Hey Nerdy Knitter, Tanya here. I'm a certified knitting instructor and master hand knitter. And the goal here at Nerdy Knitting is to help you become a more confident, adventurous knitter. You're gonna feel pretty confident when you have tackled the magic loop process for knitting two socks at the same time. It's actually not a very difficult process. So you're gonna need about 100 grams of fingering or sock weight yarn. Uh, that's about 400 yards, more or less. Um, I had two skeins, so I did two different socks, but you can do one color for the main body. And then if you want the contrast color for the cuffs and the heels and the toes, then a mini skein of about 20 grams will be plenty for that as well. Along with that sock yarn, you're going to need a knitting needle and we're using a US one, that's a 2.25 millimeter needle. You can use the size that you like for knitting socks if you know which size needle you like. You're gonna want a 40 inch circular needle. That's about 100 centimeters. You don't want anything shorter when you're doing two socks at once. That's really the minimum. A 32 inch is great for one sock at a time, but when you have two, 40 inches is about the minimum that you wanna go because you need a cord that's long enough to do the method and have both socks on those needles at the same time. You're also gonna want the pattern. You'll find it linked down below. It comes in 11 sizes, so you'll find sizes for kids all the way up through adult male size feet. And of course, the larger the foot, the more yarn you're going to need. And if you want a long leg, you might need more than that 100 gram skein of yarn. Let's go to the overhead and take a closer look at what we're gonna use for this tutorial. Let's start by taking a look at what we're going to need to knit this pair of socks. Now, if you want to just knit a solid color pair of socks with no contrast heels or toes, you're going to need one skein of yarn and you're gonna to wanna to divide it into two balls. I just used my ball winder and a kitchen scale and I made, I just weighed the yarn as I uh, wound some off into an, a separate cake and when they were about the same weight I stopped and divided it in two. Now if you want to knit contrast heels and toes and cuffs you're going to need to do the same thing with a second color. So two skeins of yarn divided into equal balls or if you have some mini skeins that's probably going to be enough to knit your, your cuffs and heels and toes as well. Now the yarn I'm using for this tutorial is Alley Cat Yarns. She is a yarn dyer here in Canada. She's based in Ottawa, Ontario, and this yarn is her Leo BFL sock. Now, I am a huge fan of Blueface Lester for socks because it's very sturdy yarn and your socks are going to last. So this is an 80% Superwash Blueface Lester and 20% Nylon Blend, and um, it's actually slightly larger skeins. It's 115 grams, so more than that 100 gram skein that you usually find for your sock yarn. And this color is called crystal and this color is called fur if you're interested in getting the same yarn that I'm using but of course that's not necessary you can use your favorite sock yarn as well so if you want that contrast color you're going to need a second color so you will have four balls of yarn all together so we can knit both socks at the same time and have those contrast colors in there as well you're also going to need your knitting needles and in this case because we are doing two at a time on magic loop you're going to want a 40 inch or 100 centimeter length. Then you're also going to need a locking stitch marker to mark that beginning of round. And then when we work the heel, we're gonna want two more stitch markers as well. So here are the socks fresh off the needles through the magic of editing. And I just wanna take a quick look at the construction. So we're going to work them two at a time. We divide our stitches in half and half will be the heel stitches and half are the instep stitches. And you can see we've got our one by one cuff and the length is completely customizable. I just prefer shorty socks for myself. Then we have a short row heel and we're using German short rows to knit this heel. And the way it's constructed, we end, we, I don't think they're the whole, I don't really have a problem with holes at the edges, but with the way we construct it, we do have a yarn tail at each side so we can weave that in in case there are any holes, we can reinforce that area and then just plain stockinette along the foot. And then I just added a stripe and I'll walk you through how I did that. And where I join the yarn, I like to do that right in the bottom to hide that jog. 
and then that contrast toe. And we're using a simple wedge toe construction here. In previous videos, we used the same kind of shaping, but we changed the rate of shaping to make a more rounded toe and a shorter toe. I thought this time we would just do a standard, sort of longer toe, but we'll cover everything we do about adding that contrast color, or if you wanna knit in one color, you can certainly do that as well. So let's start by casting on. You're going to need two balls of yarn. Now, of course, if you want to knit them in the same color, use these two balls but I'm going to knit mine in two different colors. So it'll be easier for you to tell them apart as we're working on them, especially as we're casting on, because we're gonna cast on both pairs of socks onto this one needle. We don't need to transfer anything. We're gonna do it all right here on our magic loop needle. And we're going to use the long tail cast on, but if you prefer the German twisted cast on is a great alternative. Either one will work in this situation. So I'm just gonna wrap my yarn a few times to get the length of the tail about 10 stitches. So I'm just gonna use that as my guide. So that should be plenty for my tail. Now in my case, I have to cast on 72 stitches. So what we're going to do first is take that, we're gonna start with that first sock. We're going to cast on half the stitches you need. So in my case with that 72 stitches, I'm going to cast on 36 stitches. That's half the stitches I need for this sock. So I don't do a slip knot. I just start like this. I've got the yarn held. If you know how to do long tail cast on, I'll put a video for that down below if you'd like to learn more about it. But all I have here is the working yarn is, let's move this around. The working yarn is over this finger and the tail is over my thumb. And then I'm just gonna pinch them underneath. And then for my slip knot, I'm just going to hold that needle there and swoop it towards me under my thumb and back around. And that puts my first stitch on the needle and replaces that slip knot. Now to do magic loop, we are going to make a few motions here. We're going to come towards you, up and between the strand on your thumb, catch the yarn that's around your finger, sort of like a yarn over and bring it through that strand and tighten up the thumb yarn. Now we don't wanna make these super tight or that will make our cast on too tight. So I sort of place my finger there to stop it from making it very, very tight. Then we just repeat that process. Go under the thumb yarn and up in that loop, catch that yarn that's on your index finger, come back down through, tighten the thumb yarn. You're just gonna repeat this until you've cast on all of the stitches that you need. I finished casting on half the stitches I need for my first sock. In my case, that was 72 stitches total, so I cast on 36. Now I'm going to stop. I'm gonna cast on the rest of those later. We're just gonna slide that down out of the way and we're going to cast on all of the stitches we need for our second sock. So grab your second skein of yarn. If you're using the same color, I'm gonna use a different color to make mismatch socks, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wrap it to make sure I have enough to estimate for my tail. And then I'm gonna cast on all of the stitches I need for this second sock. So I've cast on all of the stitches I need for that second sock and there's the half stitches I need. I'm gonna push these all down onto the cable and we're gonna divide this second sock in half. So in my case, that's 72 stitches, I'm gonna find the halfway point, which is 36 on each side. Okay, that is right there and I'm going to pinch the cord right there and pull it through to separate right at that point. And now we can cast on for the other half of that second sock. Hopefully if you're doing this tutorial, you're familiar with one sock on Magic Loop so you understand the basic premise of what we're doing here. But we've got our, our this sock's all cast on and divided and now we want to cast on the rest of the stitches for this second sock. So we can ignore that first that green, dark green sock, and we're gonna go with this lighter green. Push that up on our needle. And this can be a bit finicky, and we've got lots of yarn going on here, so let's find the yarn that we need. There's our tail. 
There is our working yarn. Let's get this tail out of the way. All right, so we want to divide these stitches up. We want to cast on the rest of our stitches onto this needle right here. But if you look at this one, they're joined sort of like a U or a V shape like that. So we want to do that same thing with this needle. So we're gonna hold it right beside and let's make sure nothing's twisted here. We don't wanna have a twisted cast on edge. Everything looks good. So we hold these like this. We're going to get back in that that position for long tail cast on. So find your tail. That is my tail right there. So that goes over my thumb, working yarn over my finger. And this is very finicky at first until you're getting used to it. So we just sort of have to hold this needle out of the way, but we're gonna cast on our next 36 stitches or the other half onto this needle. After we get going, this gets a little easier. So we come up in that loop on our thumb catch the index finger yarn and pull it through. And this first one, we wanna close up this gap. So we're gonna tighten this one up, but we have our other stitches on the needle, so it's not gonna make it too, too tight. So then we can continue and cast on the remainder of the stitches that we need. And the other needle is going to be in your way, but there's not much we can do about it. You just gotta keep shifting it around to cast on the rest of your stitches. And like before, don't do this too tightly. You don't want a cast on edge that is too tight because it'll be too hard to get your sock over your foot. There we go. So now that we can get into our rhythm and finish casting on that other half of the stitches that we need for this sock. So I am all cast on. We've got all of our stitches on here. We are ready to start knitting. So we're going to turn our work. The working yarn is going to be attached to the back needle. So if your yarns are twisted, you can take a minute to get them situated, but this is going to happen with two different balls of yarn. It's bound to happen, but if you can get them separated now, it'll make it easier. So we're going to look at this first sock that's up here on our needles. We want to make sure nothing is twisted. So the pearl bumps for that cast on should all be to the inside and that smooth edge on the outside. Everything looks good here. So we're going to take that yarn, drape the tail and the working yarn right over the back. That gets it out of the way. Okay, and we need obviously to have a needle to work with and we need to join our knitting. So it's this back needle that we pull out. And if you're familiar with Magic Loop, you already know this. And if you're new to Magic Loop, you probably should try to do one sock on Magic Loop before you try tackling two. And I do have a tutorial for that. I'll put a link for that down below. So to join for knitting in the round, we've pulled this needle, back needle out. Now it's in the front. You're going to take your working yarn, but I also like to use my tail. I think it helps close up that first stitch. So for this first stitch only, I'm going to use both. All right, so we can push those stitches up onto the needle tip. We're gonna take that working yarn, and in my case, I like to use the tail as well. Insert and Oh, I split this first stitch. Let's fix that first. Okay, we're going to knit that first one. I can pull that one tight and then separate the tail from the working yarn so I can knit with the proper thing. So I'm gonna take that tail and drop it right down into the center of that sock just to get it out of the way. And we're going to follow our pattern, which is a knit one, purl one rib. So my next stitch is a purl one. And then just continue that pattern across this first sock. Okay, we finished the first sock. We cannot turn our work yet though, because we have this second sock to deal with. So we're going to pull out some of that excess cord, move this sock down and move this sock up onto our needles. And this is also a bit twisted, so let's get things going here. We're gonna move our yarn to the back over that back cord. Move this needle to the front. Slide these stitches up. And check everything to make sure we're not twisted before we start working in the round on this one. So I'm just gonna 
move this around to get that twist out of there. We want that smooth edge in the front. And the same in the back. We want to see those pearl bumps. My yarns are back there, so I'm going to grab both of them. Pinch that cord close to the tip of the needle. Move these stitches right up onto the tip. And I need a little more cord, so I'm going to slide this one right down here and move this cord a little bit. This is why I think a 40 inch cord is so much better when you have two socks. You need a little cord on both sides to make this manageable. So we're going to repeat this process of knit one, purl one across. So knit our first stitch with the tail and the working yarn. Then I can figure out which one is the tail and get that out of the way by dropping it right down in the center of that sock. After we've worked a little bit, those tails won't be in the way too much. Then we can continue knitting across this second sock. So continue our pattern. We'll knit one purl one rib. I'm just going to continue that to the end of this side of the sock and then we will reposition to knit the other half of the sock. I'm finishing up my final two stitches here. Now I can drop that needle that I finished with, slide these stitches up a little, pull this cord out, and then turn the work. So our working yarn is on that back needle. I make sure that it's draped over the back and not hanging down in between. If you have it down here and then you bring it around to knit that first stitch, you're going to create a yarn over. So I like to always make sure it's draped over the back of the needle. And I can push these stitches up onto the needle. Be careful when you're doing this too. I have had times where I've pushed so hard that I pushed all the stitches right off the end of the needle and it happens. Okay. So I can ignore this second sock for now, but of course we're still on our first round. We want to make sure nothing is twisted. This is our last chance to correct it at this point. Everything looks good. So I pull out that back needle and bring it around so we can knit with it. Push up these stitches so they're on the tip of the needle and ready to work. Get that working yarn. And if you hold it in your right hand, it's the same process. You want to keep that cord close to your needle tip so we can avoid any ladders at this point. What you don't want to do though is really yank on this back stitch right here because right now it's on the cord. It's not on the needle. And if you pull on it, you're going to size it for this cord and it's going to be very, very tight. And when you're trying to push it up onto your needle tip again, it's going to be really hard to do that. So don't really yank on it, but just hold them close together, the cord and this needle, as you're working that first stitch or the first few stitches. And that should be enough to avoid any really obvious ladders. So our next stitch is a purl. I'm going to switch back to my left hand. And you're going to knit and purl to the end of this sock. Okay, finished the first sock. Now we can slide this one down, slide these stitches up and repeat the process, making sure nothing is twisted and knitting across these stitches. Yarns back there. These stitches look good. Okay, so we are ready to knit across. Push them right up to the tip. Pinch that cord close and work in your knit one, purl one rib pattern. We finished that first round for both socks. So we can pull this cord up turn our work. I like to flip it the other direction just to keep those yarns from twisting. If you keep turning it the same way, they're going to twist and twist and twist up. So try to alternate which way you flip your needles. So they're keeping those two yarns separate. So my tails are quite long, so I'm going to snip them off a little bit 
because it's too easy to accidentally think that is the working yarn. There, I've got enough there left to weave in, but now it's not such a long tail. Okay, so at this point we can check again, make sure everything is looking good. Working yarn hanging off the back. We can push these stitches up onto the needle and it is going to look like there's a big gap there but we can use the tail to close that up and then as you continue knitting around that's not going to be so obvious so pull out that back needle push these stitches up and then just continue in pattern i'm going to push both socks right up on the needle so they're ready to go grab that working yarn pinch my cord and my needle tip together pull on that tail. Now this first stitch, remember I used the tail and the working yarn. So it's got, it looks like two stitches right there. I'm just going to work them as one stitch just to close up this gap again. There we go. There's that one stitch. Now I can continue my pattern. Purling and knitting. And if you work those first stitches firmly and use that tail to pull that closed, you shouldn't end up with a gap right there. Okay, finish the first one. I'm going to move on to the second, but before I do, I've got enough space. Here. I've got enough fabric here now that I can attach the locking stitch marker to mark my beginning of round. You can use the yarn tail as well. That will be your clue that that's your beginning of round. But if you want to just place a stitch marker right on that fabric so you know that, oh, you're starting a new round right here. So I can continue on. I've dropped that yarn and I'm going to pick up the yarn for the second sock and work across these stitches remembering to close up this gap and working those two heads of that stitch there together as one there pulling that tight keeping a firm grip on it when I work, work this first purl stitch now I can go back to my normal tension and that is all there is to it we're just going to continue working this rib pattern for the length of the cuff. In my case, I think I want about a two inch cuff. So I'm just going to continue this for probably about 20 rounds total. So you just continue knitting your cuff the length that you want. And when you come to the end of a row, you turn your work, make sure the yarn is draped over the back needle and pull out that back needle to knit across the stitches on the front and continue until you have completed your rib as, lo as long as you want that rib section to be for the cuff. I finished the cuff and I'm ready to start a new round. I'm back at the beginning of round right here. My yarn is right there, ready to go. Um, but I'm doing a contrast cuff. So at this point, I'm going to cut both yarns and reverse the colors, basically. If you're doing one solid color, there's no reason to cut the yarn, but I'm going to cut my yarn and get set up for the leg of the sock. Just wanna leave a good tail for a weaving in later. And basically, I'm just reversing the colors. So I'm gonna grab this one now to start with. So like always, we push our stitches up onto the needle, the ones that we're going to work. And the working yarn's attached to that back needle. We're gonna pull that needle out. So we are all set up and I don't think I showed this at the beginning, but that's basically what you're going for. You want sort of this infinity loop or figure eight. You want a bit of cord on either side and we are ready to go. So I'm going to get my darker green for the body of this sock. And I'm just going to start knitting across these stitches. No more knit one, purl one rib. And grab that tail just to make sure it's out of the way. So I'm just going to knit in stockinette stitch. So knit across these stitches with this darker yarn. So I finished with the first sock, so I can push that one down, leaving some space over here and pull this one up and get that second color that I'm using for this one. And repeat the process. I finished that one, so now we can drop that needle, push these stitches up 
pull this cord through, reverse our work, and put these stitches up on the needle, yarns at the back, and it's draped over that back needle. You can pull out that back needle and now knit across the front. So we finish that first round. We can get set up again. So we drop this needle, we can pull that cord through. Now we want to turn our work, but I want to turn it in the opposite direction I did last time. So let me see this way, and that will keep the yarns from twisting together. If you keep rotating in the same direction, they're just going to get twisted and twisted. So try to alternate. So now I'm all set up. Those first few stitches are going to be loose because we've got our yarn tails right there, but I can tuck those to the inside and continue working across. And you want to make your leg as long or as short as you want. If you want like a standard sock, anywhere between five, seven inches, maybe even up to eight for a man's sock. Uh, for a shorty sock, you can do anywhere from just a few inches to three, maybe even four inches for a longer shorty sock. So it's very customizable. So at this point, you're just going to continue just knitting around both socks until the leg is as long as you want it to be. And for me, I think that's gonna be probably about 10 rounds the cuff is already a good inch and a half. That'll add another inch. And I like socks that are on the shorter side. I don't like long legs on my socks, but this is definitely customizable. Make it as long or as short as you want, depending on how much yarn you have, of course, because the longer the leg, the more yarn it's going to use. I finished knitting the leg of my sock. I like about a two and a half inch leg and a cuff. So that's what I've got here. Of course, you can continue as long as you want. At this point, we are ready to begin the short row heel and the yarn is hanging to the back. Our socks are at the beginning of another round right here. We're gonna slide this one down and just leave it right here because we're not gonna touch that one for now. We're gonna work on one sock at a time, back and forth just on these stitches. Now we're gonna do a little bit of a setup for this short row heel, only for those who are doing a contrast color heel. I'm going to work the heel in this color. Let me find my extra ball of yarn. This color right here, this one's not attached to anything yet. This one's attached to this over here. So I'm just gonna move it out of the way because we don't need that one right now. So if you are not working a contrast heel, then you can skip this very next step and then just start with, right with the heel. But if you want to work a contrast heel, we wanna get our main color working yarn over on this side of the sock. So we're gonna to have to just knit across these stitches. Then we're gonna to have to slip them all back so we'll be in place to start our short row heel. So I'm just gonna get set up. We're just doing one sock, leave the other sock alone. So like I said, if you are, you can slide it right down onto the end if you want, just leave it there. If you're not doing the contrast color for the heel, then just skip this step and go right to the heel. But we're just gonna knit across these stitches. There, I finished knitting. I'm not moving on to the next sock. My working yarn for my main color is on this side. Now we're gonna start our heel, but we need to start it on this side. So we just need to slip all of these stitches back to this needle. I finished slipping the stitches, so now I am ready to do the heel. Our working yarn for the main color is over here because we're gonna start with our short row heel on a right side row, and we're actually going to finish it by working the final right side row, which will put us over here anyway. So then we can cut that contrast color and our yarn is ready to start working on the instep stitches at that point. So that's why we just have to do that bit of a setup now you're ready to attach your contrast color. And we need to place some markers at this point as well. Now, um, I've got these kind of markers, so I know we're, you're basically going to be placing markers at two places. You're gonna divide your stitches pretty much into thirds. So you'll look at your pattern and it will tell you exactly where to place them. For me, I have a, a 72 stitch sock. I have 36 stitches, that's half of those stitches, for my heel and then when I divide those into thirds that's 12 stitches in each section so I'm going to place two markers here now if you have locking stitch markers something like this you could lock them on right now but I'm just going to knit my first short row heel 
um, the first row of the, the first half of the short row, which basically means I'm knitting across to that last stitch. So as I'm knitting across, I'm going to place my markers, but you can place them now. If you have some locking markers, you can put them according to the pattern. Just check the size you're knitting and then place those markers where the pattern tells you to. So I know I have 12 stitches in each section, so I'm going to knit 12 and then place my first marker. And this is also the first row of our heel. So we are going to knit all the way across these stitches, but we're going to leave one stitch unworked on this side. So I'm going to do two things at once. I'm going to place my markers and knit across for the first row of my heel. There, so I've placed both of my markers. And if we look here, I've pretty much divided it into thirds. We're going to be working short rows on the stitches to either side. These stitches are just going to be left the way they are for the center of our heel. I'm coming to the end and according to the pattern for this type of heel, we're leaving one stitch unworked. Sometimes you have more, sometimes you have less. Basically, a short row, that's all it really means is you're working short of the, the end of the row where I'm not finishing the row. I'm going to stop right there. It's a bit loose because that's that last worked stitch right there. So I'm not going to work this stitch. I leave that there and I turn my work. And this does get a bit tangled because now we have three balls of yarn attached. We've got the one for this sock and then we've got two balls of yarn attached to the sock we're working on. So it can get a bit tangled here. So just watch where your yarns are and pay attention. So at this point, we're going to work our short rows. Let's get this yarn out of the way. Okay, we're gonna use German short rows, which are very, very simple. You're just going to, this last stitch that you worked, the working yarn's coming out of it, it's held in the front because we're going to purl, but also because that's how you work a German short row. Short row. You slip that stitch purl-wise from the left needle to the right, and then you're just going to bring it, the yarn up and around and back to the front because we're going to purl. You don't have to really yank on it, but I'm holding it firmly because now that stitch has been pulled up and we have like sort of the two legs of the stitch right there underneath. It's called a double stitch. And when we come back to it, we're gonna work them just together. But this is the short row that we're using. It's gonna help close up the gap that forms right here where you turn your work. We're just gonna purl to the end of the row and leave one stitch left on the right side and repeat the process. So just purl across the stitches. You've created your first short row and we'll do the other end first short row on the other end as well. Coming up on the end of this row here and like the row before, I'm going to leave this last stitch unworked. And if, of course, that's where I started my new yarn so that stitch is big. You can just pull on that yarn and tuck it down. So we've got one stitch left here. So now we turn our work again. And we're going to work a German short row on this side. So it's just like working them on the other, on the, on the purl row. Well, except we're going to knit on this side, but we bring the yarn to the front, slip that stitch, the, the working yarn's coming out of that stitch right there. So we're gonna slip it purl wise from the left needle to the right. And then we bring the working yarn up and over. This time we keep it to the back because our next stitch is a knit stitch. So we're just forming another double stitch. You can see we've got the two legs of the stitch right there. We just hold it to the back. Okay, at this point we have our first short row at each edge. So we're going to knit across right up to that short row, but not knitting the short row. We'll stop just before it. And we're just going to work back and forth, making short rows on all of these stitches to either side. So let's knit across keeping that short row there. We've got the yarn held firmly right now because we just created another short row. Coming to the end of this row and I'm going to stop. There's my short row. Here's my last stitch. Stop there. So now we've got the one stitch and our first short row. So we turn and we work another short row. Slip the yarn, 
the yarn is held to the front, slip the stitch, that last worked stitch, bring the yarn up and over, that creates a short row. Now we need to bring it to the front so we can purl and purl across these stitches to the, another, to the other double stitch at the other end. Coming right up here on the end. It can be hard to tell until you get to it, but that's an individual stitch. That's the last one. And I can see right there, those two are connected. So I'm gonna stop here, turn my work. And at this point, I've got a couple double stitches over here and this last unworked stitch, one double stitch here and that unworked stitch. So I'm going to create another short row, bring that yarn to the front, slip it purl wise, and then just up and over the needle to create the double stitch and I can start knitting across. And this is all I'm going to do. I'm going to go back and forth, stopping when I get to the double stitch on this side, turning my work, creating a new double stitch, working back this way until I get to the last double stitch worked. And then I'm going to turn my work, work another short row here. You're going to keep doing that back and forth until you get right up to the marker. You'll have made double stitches on all of these stitches. And then on your last turn, you'll have to come back here and make one more on this side. So I'm going to continue working back and forth, making German short row double stitches on all of these stitches. At this point, I've worked the final wrong side row of this side and we have to do sort of like two rows to get us set up to do the second half of the heel. And at this point, all of the stitches on the left are now double stitches, except for this one stitch over here, which we've left. So we've got one there. All the rest should be double stitches. Everything in the middle is just the same. Then on this side, we've got that one stitch here, these double stitches, and then this one stitch left that has to be turned into our final short row. And we're doing that at this beginning of this sort of our heel turn section. So we're going to make that final short row. Bring the yarn to the front. Slip it, careful of that marker. Pull it over, slip the marker. Now we're just going to knit to the very end of this row. And we're gonna resolve all of those short row stitches. Okay, we slip the marker and then to resolve them, we're just gonna take, there's those two legs of that stitch, we're just gonna insert and knit them together. And that's it. There's the next one. Get in there and knit them together. And repeat this for all of these stitches And that is a German short row. It's that simple. They're very easy to work, or my preferred method actually. So we have resolved all of our short row stitches. Last one right there. And we're gonna knit this last stitch and be careful because our working yarn is attached so that stitch is quite large. So now we have one more row to work to resolve all the stitches on this side and then we can start the second half. That's just the first half of the heel. You can see it sort of created that pocket for the heel. So we're gonna turn our work and we're going to get started with our next set of German short rows as well. So we're gonna turn this first stitch right here on the end into a German short row. So slip it, the yarn's in the front, bring it up and over to create the short row, back to the front. We're gonna purl across to the other end. So we're coming up to the double stitches on this side, slip that marker, and then you're gonna purl them together. There's our first double stitch. We're gonna purl both the legs of that stitch together. And repeat that with this one. And that will resolve all of these short row stitches on this side. Last double stitch, and we're gonna purl this stitch right here. Careful, because of that yarn tail. 
and we can turn our work and work the second half now for this heel. So we're going to, right now, all of our stitches are worked. We have one German short row over here on the end. It's hard to tell because of that working yarn. It makes it very loose, but we're going to repeat that over here on this side as well. This very first stitch that has been left unworked, we're going to bring the yarn to the front, slip it, pull it up to make that double stitch and careful of the tail. I want to keep a tight hold on that so it doesn't come out. Okay, now we're going to work the next set of short rows. So we're going to knit past the two markers. Okay, we're coming up on this second marker. So I'm going to slip the marker, knit one, and I'm going to turn at this point. So we started by working to the ends and working our short rows in. Now we're going to start working short rows from here all the way back out. So we've knit one, I'm gonna turn, make our first short row, slip that, Pull it up and over, slip the marker, and then work to the other marker. Coming up on this next, the first marker on this side, slip it, purl one. Turn the work. So now we are going to work a German short row here. Bring the yarn to the front, slip that stitch, bring it up and over. Now at this point, if you want to, you can remove the markers because we're going to use our short row stitches as our guide. I'll leave them in for now, but you can take them out if you're comfortable looking at the short rows. Okay, slip my marker. There's that first double stitch. I'm going to knit that the legs of that double stitch together. Knit one. Turn the work. And we're going to do that over on the other side. Slip this, make our double stitch here. Bring the yarn back to the front so we can purl to the other double stitch. Here we are up to the marker. Slip that marker, there's that double stitch. So we are going to purl the legs of it together. Purl one, turn our work. So if you're feeling more comfortable about what's going on, you can take out the markers if you want, because we're just going, we're going to work across, create a double stitch here and work across to the other double stitch. There's our short row, knit across till we come to the other short row on this side. There it is right here. So knit it together, knit one, turn the work. You're just gonna keep doing this, working to, I'm gonna make an, another double stitch here. I'm gonna purl across till I get to that double stitch. I'm gonna work the stitch, the legs of the stitch together, purl one, turn my work, and then repeat going back and forth until we get over to the end on each side. So I'm coming up to my last row on this side. There's that double stitch, so I'll knit it together. Knit this one, and there is that last double stitch. It's hard to tell it's a double stitch because of the tail, but if we pull on it, you can see. There's that last one right there left on this side. So we turn our work for the final time. And we're going to work a double stitch here. So slip that, bring it up and over, and then back to the front so we can purl. We're gonna purl to the other end and work another double stitch over there. Now we're coming right to the end. There is my last double stitch on this side. Purl that legs together, purl one, and we have our double stitch here on this side, which again, because of that yarn tail, it doesn't really look like the other ones, but we can turn our work at this point. And this is going to be our last 
round for the heel. At this point, you have all of your stitches on your left needle. There are two double stitches over here, that one that's worked in that contrast color, and then one more right beside it. Everything else is just knit stitches, and we have one double stitch here. So this is where we're at right now. We're going to work one final row in our contrast color, and we can break that yarn because we'll be done with the heel. So I'm going to make my last double stitch here. Bring that yarn to the front, up and over to create the short row. Now I'm just gonna knit across all of these stitches. And when you come to the markers, we're done with them now, so we can take them out. All right, we're coming over to this side of our heel. So we've got two double stitches left right there. We're going to knit them both together or the legs of each of them together. And at this point, we can break that contrast color because we are done with that. If we were just knitting one sock at this point, we would turn our work. We would knit across the instep stitches, come back around and resolve these final two double stitches over here. But we still have another toe, or another heel to work for this sock here. But I am done with this yarn, so I'm just gonna cut it. And that's what it looks like at this point. The working yarn's over here, ready to start working our instep stitches. And we have a tail at each side. So when we come back to weave in our ends, if we end up having any holes right here, we've got tails right there that we can use to close them up. You can see that's what our heel looks like. We have just finished our first short row heel. Now we can slide this one over because we're finished with that. And we need to bring this one back on the needles and your yarn might be tangled up. So you'll wanna untangle things and find that halfway point. This looks like about it right there. I'm gonna check my stitches and make sure that stitch count is correct. And I've got my 36 heel stitches here. Okay, I am all set to work this heel now. So I'm gonna bring my needles around. I might wanna untangle my yarns at this time. This sock, I'm just gonna pull right down, leave it over here. It's all finished for now. And we're going to repeat the process for this sock. Now remember, because we're doing that contrast heel, we wanna get our working yarn over on this side. So your first step will be to take your working yarn, probably untangle it from that cord and knit across these stitches and then you're going to slip them back to this needle to start the heel. So let's do that and we'll get you set up again. Okay, I've got my yarns untangled. I'm gonna take this yarn and just move it over here because it's attached to that sock and I don't need it right now. I don't need this one anymore, so I can move that out. I'm gonna need this for my contrast heel. So first of all, I wanna knit across these stitches. There, I finished knitting across the heel stitches, so my working yarn is where it needs to be to start the instep stitches. Now I need to slip these all back to this needle. Okay, so at this point, we've got our finished sock over here. That heel is done. Our stitches are on this needle. That needle tip is, our, it's on the left needle with that needle tip pointing there. Working yarn for our main color is over here on this edge. We've got our needle free. So now we can introduce our contrast color and start working our second heel. And you're gonna work it just as you did the first. So I'm gonna work my heel and I'm gonna, when I finish about the, when I finish the second half, I will come back and we will start working in the round again. All right, I'm right over here, my last stitch. Here's a double stitch right here. So I'm going to knit those two legs together. This one's kind of wonky because of the yarn that was used. I'm gonna pull it tight so I can see it, get my needle in there. And I can drop that yarn and use the heel yarn for this. There, there's the last stitch. Now at this point, both heels are done. I can cut this yarn that I used for my contrast color heel. And of course, if you did everything in one color, you don't need to do this. So I'm finished with that. Now I'm back to my two socks. My heels are done so I can tuck in all of those yarns. So you've got your two yarns. Let's get these back up here on the needle. Okay, so we've got the yarns from both heels 
I can tuck them down inside. So the only thing I have outside is my working yarn. And now it's time to turn the work and we're going to work across the instep stitches. So we get back in magic loop position. Bring these stitches up on the needle. Yarns to the back, hanging back there, ready to work across these stitches. So pull that out. And we're going to work around to the beginning of round on both of these socks with their respective yarns. And I do try to pinch this part tightly and work this firmly. I want to close up any potential holes I'm going to have right there. But of course I do have the tails from that contrast heel that I can use to close up any other holes I might have. Now I'm going to work at my normal tension across these stitches. We are finishing up this sock so I can work these last few, drop that yarn, slide that sock down, move this one up, and repeat the process. Pinching those edges and knitting more firmly right here, just along that point. And we are back to our original beginning of round. You can drop that, slide these stitches up and reposition to work magic loop again. Okay, yarn's hanging over the back and we've got our tails from our heels here. And at this side of a heel, we have two double stitches that we have to resolve for both of these heels. The rest of the stitches have been resolved on this, the other end, but over here we still have two. So pull out that back needle slide our stitches up, get that working yarn. And if you want, grab that tail and hold on to it so you can see where that double stitch is. Give it a little tug, tighten things up. You can see right there is my double stitch. I get in there and I can knit that. And then knit this double stitch and that resolves all of those short rows. And I'll just continue knitting across and repeat this for the other sock. And these stitches are loose on the edge because we've got that yarn tail hanging there. So I'm just gonna give that a little tug. And that is done. You can see one sock heel complete right there. Tuck those inside and repeat that with this heel where we have these two double stitches right at the beginning get my working yarn find that tail and give it a tug so i can see where that double stitch is sometimes it loops over so okay it's right there make sure i'm catching both legs knitting this very firmly to close up any gaps and then this final double stitch, and then I'm going to work to the end of this round. And there we go. The heel is done. Tuck in those ends. It'll be easier as you go to adjust and see if there's any holes there, but you shouldn't have much of a hole, but you do have the yarn tails you can use. So from this point on, I'm just going to continue knitting in the round for the length of the foot on the sock and of course that is adjustable depending on how long your sock foot needs to be and the pattern will tell you specifically where to stop we're working a long toe in this case and I might add some stripes towards the end too but I will come back and show you that so at this point you're just going to continue knitting in the round using your main color for each of your socks until the sock is the desired length minus what you need for the toe but just follow your pattern it will tell you when to stop and start working that toe. I've worked the foot to about the length I need, minus what I need for my toe, and I wanna work a few stripes. I'm gonna work a little short for what I need for the toe as well. So to measure, I just use a sock ruler and I slide it in. So the round part is right on that heel, and then I can measure from there. I do pull it a little bit. I'm not yanking it up there, but I am keeping it pretty firm to see if I'm about at the right place, minus what I need for my toe, and I wanna work a few stripes, so I'm making sure I have enough for that. If you don't have a sock ruler or a tape measure or a regular ruler, works just as well. Now, when I work a few stripes, 
in Magic Loop. I don't really like to work them right at the beginning of my Magic Loop round because it's kind of fiddly dealing with all those yarn ends and yarn tails. Plus you have a noticeable jog when you're switching between colors. And there are things you can do to minimize that, but I don't really bother when I'm knitting socks. So what I do instead is just make sure I change colors on the bottom of the sock somewhere. I'm not gonna even look for the very center stitch. I'm just gonna mark a stitch here in the middle and I'll, I'll know that that is where I want to switch colors. So that jog and the color change is gonna be on the bottom of the sock. And I'm gonna do the same for this sock as well. Now, if you want it to be very exact, then count your stitches and find a stitch that's exactly in the center. It also can get a little bit tricky managing all of these yarns. We've got two different yarns here for each of our socks and we're gonna add two more yarns. So I'm just going to slip this yarn right into the sock just to make it a little easier to manage. There, and then we've only got two balls of yarn that we'll have to deal with when we're working our stripes. And we can just reverse them when we want to switch. It looks a bit silly, but it does the job. So I want to alternate my color my for a contrast color stripe right here. So pull out enough yarn to get to this marker here and then we'll introduce this color. Okay, so I've reached my marker. I'm gonna tuck the rest of that color back inside because I'm not gonna need it for two rounds. And I'm gonna keep a tail out for this one and just start knitting with this color. Then we finish with the first sock. We can repeat that process with the next sock. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to continue knitting until I have finished two full rounds of this contrast color. I'm finishing up the second round with this contrast color. I'm gonna to work to the center and switch back to my main color. So I've finished at this point and there is a bit of some loose stitches right there, but you can use your yarn tails and tighten them and, and pull them closed when you're weaving in the ends. And if you wanted to create more two row stripes, at this point I would just drop the yarn that you just used, pick up the other color from underneath and start knitting. And then when you finish two more rounds, drop that one, pick this one up from underneath and that will sort of like twist them together. So they'll stay nice and closed along that edge. But I just wanted that little two row stripe in there just for a little interest. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my yarn. I'm not gonna do any more stripes. And I'm gonna just leave this here cause I will want to do my toe in a little bit. So I can go back to my working yarn. I'm just going to carefully pull it out. I don't want to keep the, I don't want to lose the stitches that are on my needle. There we go. So I can just go back to knitting with my main color. But like I said, if you want to do stripes, this is a great way to do those stripes. I don't need the marker anymore, but I'll take that out after I finish. So I'm just going to knit a few more rounds with my main colors until I'm ready to start my toe. I'm finished with the length of the foot now and I wanna work my toe in a contrast color. If you don't want to work a contrast color, then you can skip this little setup. You're just gonna start right in with your toe instructions. But to set up for the contrast toe, I do the same as I just did for the stripe. I'm going to knit to the center and I'm going to break my main yarn. I'm gonna start knitting with my contrast color for my toe. So I'm at the about the halfway point, more or less. You don't have to be really exact with this. You can be if you want to count your stitches and find the exact center. I'm gonna cut that, that yarn. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to join my contrast color. And basically I wanna knit back around to the beginning of the round and then I can start my toe. And I'm gonna repeat that process for my second sock. Okay, so I've attached that contrast color. I've finished working, so now I'm at the beginning of round again. Can get myself set up for magic loop. There, so now we can start on our toe decreases. So we have to work across this part and then this toe and then repeat on the other side. So it's just a basic wedge toe. That's all we're doing. Now we've used the same exact wedge toe shaping in the previous two videos. I'll link them down below, those tutorials. But I changed the rate of the shaping. One of them is a standard round toe, and then the other one is more rounded. And this one is what I would call the standard wedge toe. We're just going to repeat our decrease round and our knit round until we are down to about 30% of our stitches, and then we're gonna graft the ends together. So to work that toe shaping, 
we're going to knit one SSK and then knit to the end of this sock when, until we have three stitches left. I'm down to my last three stitches, so I am going to knit two together. And knit one. And I'm going to slide this one down and repeat that for the second sock. Knit one, SSK, knit to the last three stitches, and then knit two together, knit one. And adjust again to work the instep stitches. And we're going to repeat the exact same process. Knit two together, knit one. And that is our decrease round. So you're repeating that same decrease on four different places. Knit one, SSK, knit to the end, knit together, knit two together, knit one, repeat that here, turn and repeat that on the other side. And now this round, I'm just going to knit all the way around on both socks and then I'm going to repeat that decrease round. And you're going to continue alternating between those two rounds until you have about 30% of the stitches remaining left. The pattern spells this all out completely with your stitch counts and all of these instructions, so you can refer to that. And when we are done knitting our toe, we'll have just a few stitches left and we're going to graft them together with a kitchener graft. So I'll see you back here after I finished working the rest of my toe. When your socks are done, it's just a matter of weaving in all of the ends, which I've already done, and grafting the toe. So we'll start with the first toe, slide both sections of stitches up onto your needle and we're going to use a kitchener graft so the yarn's attached to that stitch in the back and you can thread that onto a tapestry needle leave a fairly long tail about a foot or so is plenty now we're going to skip the setup part because i think it leaves like little ears on the end so we're not going to do that we're just going to do the basic formation if you want to see those setup rows and you can Google it, I'm sure you'll find it, but we are going to skip them and just go right into the kitchen or graft. So on the front needle, we have a two-step process. We insert as if we're going to knit, slip it off, and then into the next stitch, we insert as if to purl and leave it on. And draw the yarn through. And then we go to the back needle. And for this one, we insert as if to purl into that first stitch drop the stitch off and then insert as if to knit, but leave the stitch on. And that's the whole process. It's really very simple, but you are actually grafting. You're creating another row. So don't yank this and make it super tight. Keep the yarn underneath your needles and you want to make a row of stitches. That's what you're doing. You're not creating a seam, so don't yank it tight. Then we bring the yarn under and go back to the front and repeat that front process, knit, off, purl, on. Draw the yarn through, back needle, purl, off, knit, on. And draw the yarn through. And you're keeping it underneath your needles and creating another row. You're gonna repeat this until you have grafted all of the stitches. You can stop and check your progress if you want. And I like to stop and look and adjust the size of the stitches if I've got some that are too large. Over here on the edge, that's pretty large. So I'm just gonna go and lift up the leg and pull some of that excess right out of it and shift it along, along this graft row. There we go, and then I can pull that excess right out. Now I can keep an eye on that row and make sure my stitches are being formed about the same size, because we want it to look seamless. Slide these stitches back up, and if you have to put your knitting down and you come back to it and you can't remember where you left off, the last uh, part you worked is where your yarn's coming out of. So the last thing I did was insert as if to knit into this back stitch. So I know I'm on the front needle now. So knit off purl on and I'm going to keep an eye on that graft because I want it to stay about the same size those stitches back there and finish up this toe and I'm down to my last few stitches 
So like the beginning, I'm skipping that. There's a final two th a thing that you do, but we're skipping that so we can avoid those little pointy edges on our sock. So we will just knit purl and drop both of those stitches off the needle. Careful not to take the stitches off the back needle though. And repeat on the back purl, knit, and drop. And then this toe is finished so you can adjust that graft and then draw this yarn to the inside. I like to turn it until I that last stitch can be a bit loose. So I move it until it looks like it's going to hold it tight. And that's probably about there where I'll insert where that it's pulled that stitch down towards the inside. But first I want to adjust. I can see some stitches that are a bit large here. So I'm going to move some of that excess over to this side and weave in my tail. But before I do that, I've got to finish the other sock. So it's the same process. Slide that sock up onto your needles and repeat the graft with this sock. I finished with the second sock. So I'm just going to adjust that grafting row to make sure it looks as seamless as possible. Just going to work some of that excess yarn over to this tail. Then I can move that to the inside and weave in the ends and my two at a time socks are complete. Now you can avoid that second sock syndrome by knitting both socks at once using the magic loop method. But there's actually more that we could discuss about knitting socks beyond the actual process of knitting them, how to properly care for them, how to choose the right yarn for your next pair of socks so they don't wear out really quickly. And we've covered lots of different topics like these in some recent knit and chat episodes. So I'm gonna to link to a playlist right here that has those episodes. They're a bit on the long side, so you're gonna to wanna to settle in with your knitting and your favorite beverage, and I'll see you in that next video.